Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. On the uh, breakup advisory map, uh, it's uh, beginning to, the Yukon River, beginning to see some ice run along the, uh, right in through there from about Tanana on down to the Galena, seeing uh, some movement in the ice now, some open water there toward Galena and also some open water upstream toward Stevens Village. Uh, Tanana pretty much open now all the way there in the uh, Koyukuk River showing mostly open up to the north there and then still iced up as it approaches the Yukon. Looking at the satellite imagery of uh, oh, the next front that brought more rain up into the North Gulf Coast today with Kodiak picking up about over an inch, a little over an inch, 1.13 in the 24 hour period ending at four o'clock. Bering Glacier had about the same amount, uh, otherwise Yakutat had a half an inch and then a little less over the northern panhandle with about a quarter of an inch across those areas and even less than that down to the south where the front was very weak when across the southern southeast coast. Otherwise up the valley, Talkeetna had a third of an inch, otherwise one to two tenths fell across the Copper River Basin and some areas of moisture getting even north of the Alaska Range there and into the White Mountains, uh, Denali Park farther back down to the south, had about a tenth of an inch. Otherwise, some pretty good sunshine today here over the western interior, right down into Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula with uh, the clouds here, the next system spreading rain into the Unalaska area and eventually the Alaska Peninsula here. About a tenth of an inch falling at St. Paul in the last 24 hours and a lot of cloudiness and some more moisture back out to the west. On the chart, here's that front that's uh, brought the light rain into the Unalaska area. And also some gusty winds, 15 to 30 miles an hour from the southeast here, up across the Alaska Peninsula, Western Peninsula, and the Pribilofs. And then a lot of showers and clouds back out to the west to another low there out toward uh, Shimmy and Attu. Here's that 1,000 millibar low there southeast of Kodiak Island, brought the gusty winds and over an inch of rain in to the state airport earlier today. And that front also brought gale force winds here to the North Gulf Coast. Uh, earlier today, but that moving inland now and weakening, really weakening just a weak trailing edge back across the southern southeast coast. Uh, Kluwak this afternoon, clear skies, 57 degrees, so about all it did was bring some cooler air into the area down, knock temperatures down a good uh, 10 to 12 degrees from what they saw yesterday down in that region. Otherwise, up along the Arctic coast, uh, high pressure up there, light winds made for uh, areas of fog and low clouds with uh, along the, well, this morning. And that same forecast for tonight, just some patchy areas, areas of low clouds, patchy dense fog up there. And then this uh, low over the upper Yukon Valley looks like numerous showers across the uh, Tanana Valley and into the White Mountains uh, tonight and even some occasional rain there. And these showers trail back to the southwest down the river valleys there all the way to the Kilbrook Mountain areas. But uh, just some scattered showers here <coughs> across south central Alaska and along the North Gulf Coast. And fair skies, uh, maybe some lingering showers over toward Hyder or Stewart there. There's a band of moisture left of that remains of that front, moves mostly into Canada. And then this trough here again, bringing the showers, mostly wrapping around that low in toward Kodiak Island. Should stay fair here for South Central Alaska back down in toward Bristol Bay with uh, just variably cloudy skies. And then that front keeping it wet over the Alaska Peninsula. It comes a little more showery over the eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs tonight, but this front really not going to make much more eastward progress, bring a threat of rain into the Nunavak Island area 
during the nighttime hours and then a break for Shimi or for Adak and Atka, more showers out towards Shimi or that low. And then the forecast for tomorrow, we'll see that uh, high pressure stays off the coast here. So you have light northwest breezes along the coast. Still a risk of a shower, partly sunny skies, isolated shower too, kind of a band of moisture here sliding northwestward, but along and just east of the border. So really not much of anything at all. Be pretty dry with a few breaks in the overcast down there. And again, isolated showers up along the North Gulf Coast, uh, maybe a little more uh, scattered here in Prince William Sound, the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, but south central Alaska, partly sunny, uh, isolated afternoon showers, and then the area of pretty good rainfall here from the Brooks Range southward through the Koyukuk Valley and the western upper Yukon Valley, extends southward through the central interior. So these areas could uh, pick up anywhere from a third to a half inch of rain possible, with showers extending all the way back down into the western Alaska Range there and Denali Park and some widely scattered showers back out toward Norton Sound, but to the northwest, mostly sunny. To the east, mostly sunny. Temperatures back up, uh, possibly in the lower 70s again around Eagle, and uh, mostly sunny for Bristol Bay, looking pretty good there. That southeast wind coming off the Aleutian Range, uh, holding most of this moisture back across Kodiak. And now that frontal boundary may edge its way back to the west, just dashed in as a trough there. So periods of rain and fog or drizzle for, co or for the Pribilofs down across the Alaska Peninsula there. Uh, pretty good east to northeast winds possible this low here. And then showers scattered with a weak trough from a Adak all the way out to Shimia. And then for Monday, that area of showers moves eastward. And uh, there we go. Uh, just a few isolated showers for the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Same thing along the southwest coast, a real weak trough, the remnants of that front. Uh, still producing mostly cloudy skies and a few isolated showers, but uh, pretty good day, kind of the calm before the storm out over the western central Aleutians. That next storm to the southwest will push uh, gale force winds and rain into the Aleutians on Monday night and then into the Bering Sea Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we've got some isolated showers up here along the north Gulf Coast over the interior. Just some uh, scattered showers with isolated thunderstorms here over the uh, eastern interior, 40 mile country, White Mountains, especially up toward uh, Eagle and Fort Yukon. Fair up along the north slope, no change for the Arctic coast, really no change here over the Chuck Sea and northern Bering Sea or the Bering Strait. Uh, a dry day with uh, partly to mostly sunny skies for the Seward Peninsula down toward Nome and into the uh, lower Yukon Valley there. And more clouds out over the delta. And this system here, Probably will not reach the southeast coast. Looks like it's poised to move right in, but it's just going to sit there and spin and then kind of drop off and slide off to the southeast as you go into Tuesday and Wednesday. Otherwise, temperatures around the state down that way were mostly in the lower to mid 50s there, 54 at the state capitol, 53 over at Sitka, and then 55 at uh, Craig, 50 degree reading there at Elfin Cove, same thing at Yakutat, 46 Cordova with rain. 52 in Valdez, 54 at Palmer, 56 both at Kenai and Homer. Copper River Basin and Gulcana picked about a tenth of an inch of rain. They had 48 this afternoon, milder 57 with uh, less clouds there at Northway, 54 at Delta, 59 Fairbanks with uh, Tanana up to 65. And then the warm spot in the state was 72 over at Eagle, 66 for Yukon, and 63 over at, uh, in the Koyukuk Valley at Bettles. 48 in Anatovic and up to the north along the Arctic coast. The lower to mid 30s, uh, Wainwright pushing up above the freeze point as did Point Lay and Cape Lisburn, freezing at uh, Point Hope. 34 both at Kivalina and Kotzebue, about the same down at Deering. 39 at Gullivan and a little cooler at Nome with 35. 62 today at McGrath and then mid to upper 30s down the lower valleys and then into the deltas, cooling off to 50 at Bethel, mid 30s out along the coast. Off to the southwest, it uh, looked over the Pribilofs, looked uh, temperatures were in the, well, near 40, 39 at St. Paul to 42 there at St. George, 49 over the eastern Aleutians there at Unalaska, 52 at Sand Point with a uh, milder 56 degree reading up at King Salmon. And for the lows tonight, lower to mid 40s there across the southeast coast with uh, 20s for the north gulf or for the arctic coast up to the north and 20s to 30s through the brooks range look for uh, 40s mid to upper 40s to lower 50s over the upper yukon valley south central alaska upper 30s to lower 40s and a little cooler over the copper river basin 30s to lower 40s out along the southwest coast taking a look at the highs for tomorrow 
Mid to uh, possibly upper 60s here over the eastern interior. 20s back along the Arctic coast there to lower 30s on the east side. Mid to upper 50s here over the southwest interior. Same thing for Bristol Bay. 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. And the Pribilofs right up around 40 degrees tomorrow. 34 for Gamble. Mid 50s, mid to upper 50s here for the southeast coast about like today. And then taking a look at flying weather. Uh, marginal VFR possible here with that area of moisture again that's sliding northwestward along with the upper level jet here just catching the eastern border areas there mostly central and south uh, VFR here for the remainder of the panhandle marginal VFR from about Yakutat up across Prince William Sound to the Wrangell Mountains and then back down to the southwest along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula to Kodiak Island with VFR here forecast for much of the southern interior. And then with all that uh, rain and showers here, marginal VFR from the eastern Arctic coast across the east central Brooks Range right down into the uh, central interior here and then a little bit back to the west toward uh, Norton Sound. Marginal VFR over Norton Sound, the western Arctic coast there with IFR extending from St. Lawrence Island all the way down the southwest or across Nunavak Island there near the Perbolofs and then back down where that frontal boundary kind of stalls out in this area over the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, tending to improve there over the Unalaska area, probably marginal VFR to VFR back toward Nikolsky, and then more low conditions back here to the west uh, from about ADAC on out. And for passes, uh, looking pretty good up to the north, uh, Anatovic marginal VFR, and for Adigan, marginal conditions as well there. Possible IFR in the morning hours on both those passes. Lake Clark and Merrill look for VFR either approach and for both west and east entrances of Rainy VFR, Windy VFR, and Isabel VFR. Mentasta looking pretty good as well with uh, VFR conditions forecast as is Tanita and for Portage. Optimistically, marginal VFR on, even on the eastern entrance. Possibility of seeing some IFR on that east side for Chilkoot and White VFR. Looking at the freezing levels, kind of a big cool pool here over the Gulf of Alaska up in across uh, the southern interior at about 2,000 feet. But here's that gradient and then that moisture sliding up right along that thermal gradient with an upper level jet. And about eight to 6,000 feet here, 4,000 feet all the way up to the uh, Selawak Valley cooler conditions back out over the western bearing. And taking a look at icing threats, uh, could be a little bit here scattered areas of, especially along the eastern border of the Panhandle, and also some remaining stuff over Prince William Sound and the Kenai Peninsula. A little more extensive area up here of uh, rime or mixed icing from the Brooks Range or even the eastern Arctic coast right down in the central interior. And again, that extends back toward Norton Sound. I don't think it'll reach all the way to the coastline there, but. Uh, close and then here with that front from St. Lawrence Island down across the Perbolofs, Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, all below 12,000 feet of the Rhine variety. Taking a look at the upper level wind flow chart at uh, 30,000 feet, southeast flow there across the Panhandle just along the border 60 to 80 knots with uh, light variable flow at this altitude over the interior. In fact, uh, 9,000 feet doesn't show much difference. It's pretty light, but southeasterly 5 to 15 through the interior. Stronger 20 to 30 knot winds here over the North Gulf Coast and about 30 knots from the southeast over the Alaska Peninsula, even stronger on the southwest coast with 30 knot winds up to St. Lawrence Island. Then back around to the northwest at 30 knots there coming across Nunmak Island and Aleutians lighter winds. 3,000 feet southeast 30 across the peninsula, northwest 30 back across the eastern Aleutians, lighter winds out to the west. Southeasterlies 25 to 30 Kodiak Island, 30 to 40 knots along the southwest coast, and a band of 15 to 25 knot winds around this low center there right over the Koyukuk Valley, but light variable conditions for the Copper River Basin. Easterly still at about 20 for the North Gulf Coast, and light winds for the Panhandle. Lake, uh, <clears throat> turbulence, uh, let's see. That's probably Kodiak Island of the light to isolated moderate varieties below six to 8,000 feet, Alaska Peninsula, back up to the northwest into the northern bearing there in St. Lawrence Island. And then with that northwest wind wrapping back around, could be some isolated moderate chop along and on the lee side of the eastern Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. The flood that buried Fairbanks in water that was four to five feet deep started on August 8th, 1967. We had strong southwest flow in, the 19, in August 1967. And this provided a very large area of moisture from the North Pacific and the Southern Bering Sea to be lifted up and into interior Alaska. 
we had a stationary frontal boundary um, persist across interior Alaska for over a week. So as weather systems moved in off the North Pacific and into the Bering Sea, they moved across this frontal boundary. So we had continuous weather systems moving right across the interior, which kept bringing more and more rainfall to the Fairbanks area. Now, there are a lot of conditions to help create this extensive, this persistent rainfall. And of course, moisture is one of them. But moisture from a typhoon? It was Typhoon Hope, which had been spinning around in the, uh, the Western Pacific, got pulled up into this flow and that warm, moist air from the typhoon got pushed into the interior. Normally, the Alaska rain prevents a lot of moisture from making its way into the Fairbanks area or into the interior. In August of 1967, that heavy influx of moisture from Typhoon Hope took a different path. You've got the Alaska range here, the Brooks range here. There's really no high terrain here, and that moisture just can slide right in and right into Fairbanks. And with when it, it came along this uh, stationary boundary and uh, and then the hills to our north yeah. you know all that air had to be lifted up and it cooled and it caused it to um, you know enhance the precipitation so what was learned as a result of the 1967 flood well it cost 240 million dollars to build and so far there hasn't been a flood since 1967 the closest Fairbanks came to flooding again was on June 4th, 1992. The Sheena Flood Control Project is upstream of downtown Fairbanks. If the water is expected to reach a certain level in downtown Fairbanks, um, they'll lower the gates here and start shaving off some of that water. If this floodway fills up all the way, the water will eventually get overtop this sill and go into the Tanana River and be diverted totally around Fairbanks. Over 12,000 people were evacuated. It was so strange to see this current going down the street and the boats going by, and then we, we got to Barnett Street. It, it was a little different then, but I just remember the, so many the rough water. He thought something was internally wrong, something had happened inside the house, like a pipe had burst or the sewer had backed up. He had no idea, none of us had any idea that the whole sea was flooded. I mean, that was the furthest thing from our mind, thinking about the city flooding. Uh, so it, there was no panic. There was just, oh, we got a big problem. Well, I was almost five, and, you know, I just remember bits and pieces. Uh, I, remember, I, I remember never being scared and thinking how cool it was watching the water rushing in around the cracks of, of the front door of our friend's house where we were uh, staying at the time. Military came and picked us up from our house in a boat. So here's a four-year-old me sitting on the front of the boat thinking I'm just captain of the world. There were a lot of very worried people, but everybody was pitching in and helping everybody else. And then I found out we were actually going to be staying inside a high school on the second floor. It was at Lathrop High School on the second floor, which was a cool thing to me too because I lived in a one-story home. The Lathrop Hilton was very busy, of course, with boats arriving and people coming. They wanted the names of everybody there. And then we were in touch with who was staying out at the universities. All was great confusion. I remember being lifted out the next day by helicopter to the university from the rooftop. Uh, I remember that part and I remember sleeping on tables up at the, I believe it was the Gruning buildings. The most frightened part, the river had washed the uh, bridge away and there was a beam that we had to walk across this raging torrent and I can remember having to walk across that with my mother and being very frightened. And I remember that being the only real scary part. The rest of it, uh, from a five-year-old's perspective, was pretty cool. If I learned anything, it was that there's no need to panic as long as safety's first and as long as everyone's safe. The rest is just property. What makes you say? Well, I guess the people. I've always had such a good time here. I enjoyed teaching. I liked it when I worked at the news miner. I'm involved in lots of things here. I just... I just like the people. Well, first of all, I, I talked to some of the old timers and they said, oh, we'll get maybe a little bit of water in the basement. So I listened to the old timers, but I also, something in my gut told me that this wasn't, uh, this could be a problem. It was a continuous rain. I mean, there'd be very few breaks. And this thing came in the, in the, in the night, you know. I got a hold of Bill Wally and I said, hey, Bill, 
get on the radio and tell them that we may be having flooding here. And we woke up and uh, the next morning and the city was underwater. They handed me a sleeping bag and a wadi uh, radio. Safeway was across where the post office is now. They looked like they might have had a half inch of water in there. They were pumping it out and trying to keep it out. Was there a concern about looting? Well, there wasn't to start with. Here come two teenagers in a brand new canoe that was loaded to the gun wall. I just picked up the radio and said, uh, what's the procedure on looting? And immediately Red Boucher's voice, the mayor of Fairbanks came back and said, unhesitatingly said, shoot on sight. And there was no more looting in Fairbanks. What's, what has stayed with you till now that you can remember about the flood? 20 years of military and especially combat training. But you take action and if you end up with egg all over your face, uh, well, was, uh, so you made a mistake. If you don't take action and people lose their lives, you regret it forever. The mood of the community when the flood hit. Fantastic. Probably if you look through the archives, I called it the can-do city. At that particular time of year, we were not that far from freeze-up, and a whole community from the university, Dr. Wood, uh, everybody just pitched in, and I was very proud of them. Would you change anything if you went through it today? Not a bit. No, uh-uh. And I'm just thankful I had that gut instinct to go ahead and do what we did. I live in Anchorage now, but Fairbanks will always be uh, my home of heart. They're just a different bunch of people. True pioneer spirit. Uh, so, hey, anything we want, anything we set our mind to do in Fairbanks, we get done. Welcome back. Well, this area of ice out in the Bering is expected to take a jog off to the northwest, especially when that next storm uh, moves into the bearing and those east-southeast winds pick up first to next week. Otherwise, moving on to the southeast coast, uh, winds southeast up here at about 20 knots on the north coast. Otherwise, westerlies to northwest uh, 10 to 15 knots, northwest up to 20 knots with four-foot seas there for Clarence Sound. Otherwise, southerlies uh, from uh, Stevens Passage right up through Lynn Canal tomorrow afternoon, only at about 10 knots with slight seas. Then we'll go northerly for Northern Lynn Canal on Monday at about 10. No change here for uh, Stevens Passage. Northwest 20, no change down there for the southern inside waters. Southeasterly is at about 20 out here along the coast. More easterly on the north coast and more southerly down to the south. Small craft advisories for the western Gulf Coast, the Barren Islands, and the waters east of Kodiak Island tomorrow for east northeasterlies at about 25. Cook Inlet northeast 15 to 20, east 15 for Prince William Sound. Northeast about 20 for Shelikoff Strait. Then look for uh, small craft advisors for the North Gulf Coast. 30 knots with 13 foot seas uh, for Monday. And then uh, dropping back to about 20 knots here for the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay. Lighter winds for Cook Inlet. Northeast 20 for Shelikoff Strait. Northerly winds there on the east side of Kodiak Island. Northeast 15 for Prince William Sound. For Bristol Bay, small craft advisories tomorrow. Southeast to 25 and then from Sitkanak all the way along the Pacific side of the peninsula there, easterly is 25 to 30 knots, much lighter on the Bering Sea side with five foot seas. And then on Monday, light southwesterly is at about 10 knots here, pick up to roughly 15 knots with six foot seas there toward Bristol Bay, southwest at about 20 here on the Alaska Peninsula. And then out in the Aleutians, tomorrow small craft advisories for northwesterly is 25 to 30 knots here for the eastern Aleutians. Westerly is 15 to 20 knots for Adak and Atka. And then light variable winds here, no gradient out towards Shimi and Atu, west of uh, Amchitka. And then those uh, swing around to the southeast, pick up to 20 knots. They're not too big of an increase. Southeast 15 there, west of Adak. And the central Aleutian south to southwest at 15. Lighter winds, southwest breezes 15 to 20 knots across the Fox Islands. And for the southwest coast, uh, small craft advisory, southeasterly is 25 knots at front, staying right about in this position through tomorrow, keeping those winds up there, southeast 20 for St. Lawrence Island. Lighter southwesterly is here back towards St. Matthew Island, northwest 20 for the Pribilofs. And then the outlook for Monday, southwest 15 for the Pribilofs, 
and that extends right up into Cuscoquam Bay. North of Nunavak Island, southerlies at about 15 with southeast winds at roughly 20 knots there for St. Lawrence Island. Looking at the Arctic coast, northeast winds uh, 10 to 15 knots from the central coast all the way over to Demarcation Point. And then easterlies at 10 knots for the west side, easterlies 20 knots here from uh, Wales all the way up to Cape Lisbon. And then for Monday, southeast 20 here from Wales to Cape Thompson, easterlies there on the southern uh, west side, otherwise the easterlies at about 15 knots, uh, a little stronger, possibly south of Icy Cape, but east winds 15 knots for the central coast, lighter, more variable winds here along the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline. And for tonight, uh, fair lingering showers here over the southern southeast coast, the southeast portion of the panhandle with clearing up to the north, scattered showers here along the north Gulf Coast, uh, Kenai Peninsula locally over south central Alaska, more numerous showers across the Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, uh, stretching up across the White Mountains into the upper Yukon. And that'll kind of shift around tomorrow to lie something like that. Uh, again, maybe as much as half an inch of rain falling across the central interior back up through the Koyukuk Valley. Otherwise, to the west, drier conditions, more sun, warmer temperatures, possibly reaching 70 again around Eagle with this stalled out system here keeping it wet over the Pervolofs and the Alaska Peninsula drying out over the eastern Aleutians. And then a threat of some showers as that uh, weak trough spreads in to the west there. And then just a few isolated showers remaining along the southwest coast. Look for uh, scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms here over the eastern interior. Showers all the way back uh, to the Noatak Valley with uh, that rain symbol should not be there. Isolated showers along the north Gulf Coast, uh, partly mostly sunny for the panhandle as that next system here is going to uh, kind of stay put there, weaken and then slide off to the southeast. And this is the next system that's gonna roll into the Bering Sea or the Aleutians Monday night and increase the storms on Tuesday. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.